The last visualization application that we're going to take a look at is mailing lists, and that's kind of ironic. We started with the mailing lists, and we're going to end with the mailing lists. The mailing lists, of course, are from my open source Sakai project, which I love and very proud of. And, and so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to crawl the archive of a mailing list, and then we're going to do two visualizations. One is a activity visualization, and another is a uh, word cloud. So um, it's probably, probably the more important thing is when I do the demonstration of how the software works. So this is a large data set, so you got to be careful. Uh, this could spider gmain.org, which is a very free and friendly archive. This data originally came from uh, gmain.org, um, but I've got a copy of it. And so gmain.org is not rate limited, but if everyone who is watching this starts spidering gmain.org at the same time, you will crash it. It just doesn't have the horsepower to give you this data as fast. And so I've got something that can give you the data super fast and has no rate limit on a really good server, and it's cached all around the world using a technology called Cloudflare. So please, please, please don't point this at gmain.org. Point this at the URL here, mboxdrchuck.net, et cetera, et cetera, and then you can run this as fast as you like. Now, another thing to worry about is if you have a metered connection, so don't do this on a cell phone connection because you'll pay thousands of dollars perhaps. Make sure you run a no-cost connection um, before you start running this because this is going to pull a lot of data down. If you just start this from scratch and you let it run, it it on a super fast connection, it, the whole, downloading the whole thing is probably about four hours. On a on my home connection, uh, when I had like about a ten megabit connection, it took several days. And so, so just understand that in this one, it's both fun to deal with a ton of data, and it's scary to deal with a ton of data. So this one is big. This one is you'll see the process in action because it'll run for a while. Everything, you, the things will take a long time. So here's basically the flow of the data in this particular one. You are going to have the restartable spider that talks to the API, mboxdrchuck.net, which has a scalable copy of all this information. Um, and again, it's going to do kind of a raw database um, not a very clean database. It's sort of a mess. It's just just enough columns to keep track of whether or not we've got this page or not. And so so this has you know the ones we've retrieved so far. And so what Gmain does is it sort of scans down to see where to retrieve next, gets that, and then starts scanning and then adding things here. So it just adds it and then it blows up and then it comes in again and says, okay, I'll start here. And then it starts retrieving stuff and fills this in, fills this in, fills this in. And sometimes you put like a delay in this so you don't overwhelm networks or don't overwhelm servers. But basically this is pretty much a raw retrieval of the email messages. And this file can get rather large. This is the one that's greater than a gigabyte. Now this data is actually really nasty. It's email data. The date formats changed. This is data that lasted from 2004 to like 2012 or 13. Um, and so this, this data has got a lot of things wrong with it. Um, it even has things where people's email addresses changed. And so it has this mapping file. This comes along with it, this mapping file that says, here's this one person and here are the six email addresses that they used throughout the life of the uh, project. And so there is a relatively complex, and so this is, this part here is super slow, um, very slow. This part here is slow, but it'll take like, depending on how fast your computer is, somewhere between two minutes and 10 minutes. This, will, this, first, this first part will take days perhaps, depending on the speed of your network connection. And so what Gmodel does is it reads through this, it actually recreates, it wipes this out and recreates index.sqlite every time it runs so that you can change any number of things, you can respider things, you can do whatever. Um, and often the cleanup, this is one of those cleanup processes and you have to tweak the cleanup process. You like look at your data like, oh, the cleanup missed something, so I've got to run it again. So this produces index.sqlite every time it runs. So this is like two to 10 minutes. Um, Gmodel is two to 10 minutes and it like maps names. And when it's all said and done, this is a very small, highly normalized, it's a nice data model. This one here had the content SQLite has an ugly data model. Index.sqlite has a pretty data model. It's got foreign keys, it's got all this stuff. And all those things we talked about in the database where 
it's efficient. And so in your mind, keep track of how fast it is to scan all the data in a database with a bad model. And then watch when you run like GBasic, which is a scanner, or GLine, which produces line data, or GWord, and watch how fast they run. They run in like a couple of seconds at the most. And this runs in two to 10 minutes. And, that, and the difference is, is that's because the data is efficiently modeled in index.sqlite. So you can take a look at that using SQLite browser and take a look at the data model. And you'll see it looks just like the stuff we talked about in the database chapter. It's got foreign keys and, and all those things. And so that runs and you got this. And then we do our visualizations and our analysis from this clean version of all the data. And so GBasic just loops through and prints some stuff out. It's a great way to test things. It's a pretty easy to understand program and you could take a look at it. GLine does some bucketing and makes a, some histograms to produce a line graph. And then uh, GWord does a, a different histogram. It does a histogram of word frequency and then produces that as the word frequency ends up in gword.js. And then we have two HTML files that use the d3.js um, visualization to produce a line and a word chart. And so, you know, I'll, in, a, in another video, I will show you how this code works, which is probably more useful than this picture. Um, but uh, this is a whole bunch of good stuff in this uh, particular application. And, uh, and if you really understand everything in here, you can build a pretty sophisticated uh, data retrieval and analysis pipeline. Um, and so, uh, so that's it. Uh, I thank you for watching all these lectures and uh, look forward to seeing you on the net.